classic hits. Yesterday I was talking to friends of mine and they were saying, they were asking me like I should know or something like that. You know, because people, when you're on radio, people say, I know you don't know about this, do you? They think you know everything, right? But they were asking me, should they book their holidays? Because of course, the D-Day is the 19th of July. Ireland has signed up to the Digital Green Certificate System and the country aims to adhere to European regulations around travel in the coming weeks. And the government spokesperson has said that officials are working around the clock to get the EU system up and running in time for the 19th of July. In other words, you should be able to travel within the United, or within the European Union with the exception of the United Kingdom. We'll talk about that in a minute. And also the United States as well. They are including that in that as well, I believe. So we'll find out more about that. And that all depends on decisions made by Joe Biden too. But will it work? How does it work? What do you have to have to get it? And is it going to make a difference? And to find out a little bit more about it, we're going to talk to Owen Curry, who's a travel expert. Owen, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Al. Okay, it's been a little while since we spoke last. We're in a slightly better position than the last time we spoke, Owen. At least there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Although the, we, the Delta variant might be, you know, putting it paid to that at the moment, but there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Yes, we have a date. We have a date that um, the ban on non-essential travel, because it's really important to remember that's still in place. This is the €2,000 but, Euro fine at Dublin Airport if you leave the country. The Cardi are, uh, are in position in Dublin Airport, so as you go going to your aircraft, they will ask you uh, what the purpose of your travel is. And until July the 19th, that remains in place. After July the 19th, uh, non-essential travel is allowed again. We're back to the position we were uh, before, uh, throughout of all of last summer. Nothing else is very clear. All the things you've talked about are well flagged, but we don't know what they look like, what the shape of them will be. But we do have a couple of hints now that are important. We know from the 15 countries that have already implemented the digital green um, certificate uh, that it's, it's only due to come in next week, but a lot of countries have moved already. And we know how it's working from those. OK, so to get the, 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 the green certificate, let's go through the, the process of that. Now, you will get a text if you've already had your vaccinations. The, the plan is you will get a text from the HSE with a link uh, which will take you to a QR code, I, I, I believe, where, where I'm assuming they're going to have to set up an app for this. Yeah, well, you can actually download uh, uh, the QR code. With that, um, presumably, they will set up an app, but they, you, you might need the app. Um, okay. So a, lot of the, a lot of what we're seeing um, with downloaded forms, uh, you don't actually need an app for us. The system is working for, for instance, if you're, if you're traveling for essential travel at the moment and you get your PCR test, you do download the QR code for that. So it, wo- it won't be enormously different from that. Okay. But the key is that it has to be issued, as you say, by the HSE. Now, there's a bit of confusion at the moment. Um, so I'm fully vaccinated. So I can go. I don't need a PCR test as long as I'm going to these countries that are within the agreement area. Um, if you don't have a vaccination, um, you are meant to get a PCR test uh, beforehand, depending on which country you go to. Some countries will require an antigen test, some require PCR tests. At the moment here in Ireland, we're still requiring PCR tests. But there was a suggestion by Leo Varadkar, because young people, of course, haven't been vaccinated yet, and that's no fault of their own, that they may not, they may still qualify. Is there any clarity on that yet? No, that's just a suggestion. It remains a suggestion by Leo Varadkar. What the government are doing is getting strong advice from NEFA that uh, not to... Um, to go any further than fully vaccinated people free travel, uh, what the government decides then will be their decision. They take the advice and make the decision honest. But you're absolutely right. Full course of vaccination, whether that's the double vaccination for uh, two of the providers or the single mm. vaccination from Johnson, that's the, they're the only people who can tr- are clear to travel without restrictions. And you have it exactly right. PCR tests were pretty much the normal, but um, in the last two months, we've seen a lot of countries accepting antigen tests as well. There's, that is significant, not just for the cost. It costs 90 or 95 euro from the main, two main providers of PCR tests based at the airport. But if you are getting an antigen, it's also quicker. It's quite an inconvenience to 
do your PCR test and, uh, a day in advance mm-hmm. and then wait until the day of travelling before you get the result. And I suppose we're, we're, there's still all to play for in the second half, so to speak, when it comes to the antigen test because that argument is still ongoing between government and NEFIT in relation to the validity of, Our, of antigen, antigen tests. Is, antigen tests, is that they're not enthusiastic about it. They're the least, yeah. probably the least enthusiastic in Europe and I don't see that changing. That means that if you're not vaccinated, you can use more, most countries accepting the antigen test outbound it doesn't require a PCR on the return. The two most significant countries, 70% of our holidays go to Spain and Portugal when you're counting the Canaries as part of that. Yeah. So they both accept antigen tests. Another really important change, Niall, in, in, from uh, both countries in the last fortnight is that they don't require any test at all for uh, under six, and that's been extended to 12. So okay. under the age of 12, no test required. But, 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 it, but can I ask you, Owen, sorry to, to interrupt yeah. you. So let's say I go to Spain and once my kids are, are, are over the are under the age of 12, I don't have to get them tested, right? That's right. But if I'm coming back to Ireland two weeks later, do my kids then have to have a test because Ireland doesn't have those same requirements? Uh, or what's the Ireland, age requirement Ireland, here? The age requirement here is six. So if they're eight years of age, I'm going to have to get a test for them to come back to Ireland? Correct. That's all very complicated for people to understand, isn't it? It's an awful shame we can't have just one single regulation for the whole of Europe to make it so much easier for everybody. But that's, anyway, what, that's what Europe wants and that's what the well, European that's... Commission wants. But mm. when they brought that document to the member states, the member states were given the freedom to implement their own policies and they're not going to surrender that lightly. Okay, in relation to people booking their holidays at the moment, does it look like, you know, the schedules that, you know, Ryanair, Aer Lingus and other airline and other carriers will be providing? I mean, what sort, are we looking at 50% of the schedule flights that we would have had two years ago? Now, I can't compare it to last year because we had nothing last year. You know, is it looking like we'll have a good, you know, set of uh, flights or schedule of flights uh, charters? Another change there. We it, we had a very full schedule. We had a schedule that compared like for like with 2019 and we had four four new routes we didn't have in 2019 uh, in the schedule as well. Um, places like Rhodes from Ryanair and um, uh, Santorini from Aer Lingus and Antalya from Turkish Airlines uh, uh, were, were all in the schedule. They, had, they were new routes being introduced. So it was a very ambitious schedule. What we've seen is one of the airlines, Aer Lingus, pulling back considerably from that. Uh, all the transatlantic flights that people might have booked to Los Angeles, San Francisco, um, the Orlando Israelis. would have been a big destination as well, yes. Twice Orlando, a week. they were all in the schedule. A lot of those have been pulled. Now, they've kept their Chicago, Boston, New York. What they're doing is they're bringing people booked on those flights and through well, the three great ways. And to interrupt you again, Owen, in relation to the United States, currently the ban is still in place for European visitors Absolutely. to the United States unless it's a necessary journey or you, or you have an exemption. When is that Absolutely. likely to be lifted? We're here uh, July the 5th is probably a a potential date to open the ESTA applications again. So that means that uh, America is moving in that direction. There was a bit of a hiccup with that. Um, uh, Europe, it's a Europe at Brussels and Washington are negotiating on this. And it does look like vaccinated people will be allowed to travel and it will be reciprocal. But Ireland had run into two issues here. One of them is that we are we tend not to follow Brussels policy immediately. We tend to delay a little bit. But the second thing was uh, all of Europe was put uh, was put on a lesser uh, grade of warning from mm-hmm. by the US State Department, except Ireland and countries. The, the reason was they didn't have the data from Ireland that probably relates to the hack in, in the HSE system. That was right uh, 48 hours ago. So it does look like we're back on course to being part of the deal with the United States. As I say, no date. And, that, and that, will apply bo- that will apply both ways. In other words, from you're hoping from the 5th of July, well, we'll say the 19th because the 19th out of our country, really, realistically, for uh, unessential travel. So from the 19th of July, I should be able to go to America, get in there, if, as long as I have a vaccination, and they're accepting antigen tests in the United States, aren't they, as well? That's right. And they I, accept antigen tests yeah. if we're open. The hope is that it'll be the same as Europe. Okay, and, and coming the, back from the United States, I need a, if I don't have a vaccination, I'll need a PCR test to come back PCR to Ireland. PCR test returning, exactly. Now, what, um, it, that's predicated by the fact we do know definitely we're signing up for the European system. We don't know if there's going to be uh, a travel bubble set up at the United States simultaneously with that, but it is being speculated. Okay, 
the final question really is, so I'm sitting at home at the moment with the family and we're thinking we want to go away on holidays, right? And let's say we want to go away to the Canaries, um, or I don't know, or New York or whatever it happens to be, um, for August. Do you honestly believe, with, with what's going on at the moment, and there's been a suggestion, of course, that the lockdown restrictions may be extended because of the Delta variant, do you believe that I would be safe in doing that? I mean, is this set in stone, this 19th of July, is it set in stone or is it movable? Can it be moved? Is it irreversible, this date? The 19th of, Ju- of July is there because we have three weeks after the 1st of July to implement European policy. We're wound on the clock nearly as far as you can go uh, with two days to go. What uh, We have the power as a member state to imp- put our own terms and conditions on that afterwards. And you will see, we've already seen a bit of debate that we might, uh, you know, wanting the government to do that. I think they'd be reluctant to do that after what happened um, in the few months since January. But the the, uh, legislation is in place to do that, should they require. To answer your question, I do expect the first two weeks to be slow enough. Uh, I do expect that August will be when people start moving in numbers, the vaccination program. Will have the numbers will have a uh, different complexion that a lot more people will be through the full course. The important thing if you're booking and if you're putting that money is follow the money. Uh, normally people follow the money after the event. Follow the money in advance. Just work out in your own head. If something goes wrong, there's a sudden spike in numbers in a sudden location. How do I get my money back? That means put it with people that you know you, will be tr- you can trust to uh, either put the... Uh, to get a flight, voucher or get a refund. But, 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 oh, but what you're saying to me, see, what you're saying, what you've just said there now, that takes away the confidence again. And this is why I'm asking, because this is what the Aviation Authority or the Aviation Association have been looking for all along, is they're looking for confidence because people are not booking holidays because of a lack in confidence. Yes, we have a date, and, and but they're concerned that, you know, because they booked last year, they might have booked twice last year and twice it was cancelled or the country turned from being a red, red, green country to a red country and they couldn't get back again or they had to get back early because there was not going to be any more flights. So people have lost confidence in the holiday industry and they need confidence. So... When you were saying to me, well, you know, if things change and case numbers in the canary spike or something like that, and all of a sudden that's removed from the list, is that still going to be going forward the case that countries might be removed from the list that you've already booked? Absolutely. But you've got to remember, uh, first of all, on the restrictions, you know, I'm, go back a, a little while. Everybody had these sort of restrictions. You had to pay for a US visa to go on holidays there. So we've had this wonderful era of unrestricted travel. Um, and the, the, it's, it's a small enough imposition, even if we have to do the antigen tests. The well, that's not, and I don't believe that's an imposition at all. I think most people would be happy enough to do that. But, <laughs> I, but I come back to the confidence of booking it and knowing that you're not going to have to cancel your holidays I, again. And the aviation and holiday industry always get to shake out. There are things like storms, you know, uh, uh, ice, ash, ash clouds. clouds yeah. ice you know, when you book, there, it's not really that you're going to be guaranteed that you're going to you be flying on the day that you are. It's the important thing, as I said, is that your money is protected and the contract is still in place and you don't end up with what happened with some of the third parties, mainly based out of the island, off the island, be the love holidays and kayaks and people like that that didn't give the money back. So that what we have from, from Aer Lingus is a guarantee to the end of the year, which is a pretty big guarantee that if you want to move your flight, uh, you can do, you can do so it. free of charge, yeah. And that's a, like, you don't get that in high season. Where Ryanair are only offering it, for instance, to the end of uh, June. But when you're making that booking, sit back and say, if things go wrong and that spike, because we can't uh, this, this morning future, say, no. uh, you know, exactly what's going to happen. Well, how am I getting the money back? Travel agents, very, very safe way to go. And most of the, the, uh, the airlines have very, very good terms and conditions at the moment because they know they need to build that confidence. They do their best to it, but as you just pointed out, the absolute confidence, the certainty, is certainly not going to be back for the summer. All right, well, listen, it's been wonderful talking to you again. Thank you very oh, much indeed. Pleasure. No, thank thank you. you. Owen Curry, travel expert, um, and basically... Nothing is a certainty, is what I want to say, but certainly we have a lot more certainty than we did this time last year. 